Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about Cap M uh, and beta and stocks and how all that ties together. Now, let's start with beta. Every stock has a beta. Now, what does that mean? The beta is a way to measure how risky the stock is compared to the market. Now, we all know that when the market goes up, most stocks will go up as well. And when the market goes down, like during a recession, during a global crisis, stocks will also go down. But they don't all go down equally. You have some stocks that don't move very much. So whether the market is doing well or it's doing very poorly, they, you know, they will move, but they don't move significantly. At the same time, you have other stocks that go bananas. When the market is hot, they're going up like crazy. And when the market is down, they're crashing. Now, one way to measure that is the beta. Beta is a value that is compared to the value one, right? Think of the market as having a beta of one. Now, if a stock has a beta of two, it means it is two times more volatile or two times more risky, or it moves two times more than the market. So we expect that the stock will increase by twice as much as the market when the market is going up, and we expect that the stock will decrease twice as much as the market when the market is going down. So say the market today went up 3%, a stock with a beta of two is expected to have gone up 6%. Now, beta is very important in equity valuation and determining what a stock is actually worth for investors to decide whether or not they should buy it. Now, every stock and every investment has what we call a minimum return that it should earn given the amount of risk. And stocks with more risk should earn a higher return. Stocks with less risk can get away with earning a lower return. We generally call that a required rate of return or a minimum required rate of return. And it's a function of the overall market and the beta of the stock. The SML line or the cap M line is a line that is made up of every required rate of return for every level of risk. So if you were to find every single required rate of return for every possible beta, you would end up with this, uh, with this line. Now the line starts out at the risk-free rate and it connects to the market portfolio, right? The hypothetical portfolio that is meant to symbolize the entire market. And this line that is created shows us every required return that we should earn given the amount of risk. So depending on how much risk the stock has, there is a corresponding return that it should earn. The way to calculate that is using the CAPM formula, simply taking the risk-free rate plus the market risk premium, which is also the slope of this line, multiplied by the stock's beta. Now, how do we use this? Well, there's the required rate of return or the minimum return that a stock should earn. And then there's the expected return that you know, we are expecting given a variety of things. Now, if the stock is expected to earn an amount that is equal to the required rate, then we say that the stock is correctly priced. So it's not a good investment, it's not a bad investment. It's what we call a hold. It's fairly priced. You're not getting a deal, but you're not getting ripped off. If the expected return is higher, however, meaning that the stock is expected to earn more than it should, given how much risk there is, we would say that that stock is undervalued or underpriced. Those are your good investments. That's what we're all looking for. We're all looking to find a good deal. We're all looking to underpay for something. Conversely, the expected return is below the required rate. This is what we would call an overpriced stock. These are the stocks you generally want to avoid, and not just stocks, but anything. You typically don't want to be overpaying for something, right? Now, the reason you want underpriced stocks is because given that they're underpriced, you expect their price to rise back to their fair value. And the reason you don't want overpriced stocks is because, once again, since they're overpriced, you're expecting that they will fall down to their fair value. So that's it for this short video. I hope that you found it helpful. Uh, if you did, leave a comment below. If you have any questions regarding this, uh, please don't be shy to ask. I read the comments. I try to respond to all the comments. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.